So beginning of autumn, 1st of September, and finally the sun has come out. Hello, I'm Anthony. If you haven't watched my previous videos, I have a solar panel array commissioned last November. It's nine kilowatts in size on two roof planes on my house. It consists of uh, 28 uh, panels. Uh, each of them is connected to a solar edge optimizer. And all of these panels tie into one single eight kilowatt inverter. That inverter will take solar power surplus and it will convert it into hot water uh, using the immersion heater in my hot water tank. The update for August is quite brief. Uh, it's been quite a cloudy month overall and uh, even though the rest of the country has been enjoying huge amounts of uh, sunshine, uh, particularly in the west of Scotland, um, the northeast of Scotland has just been under a layer of stubborn cloud brought in with uh, northerly or northwesterly winds, uh, sometimes also coming in from the east. And that has really brought down the output of my solar panels quite a lot. So overall for the month, uh, we generated 768 kilowatt hours of electricity. It's a lot less than what I was really hoping for. Um, potentially I was reckoning on one megawatt hour back in April. Um, however, that's the weather for you. Um, if I had the solar panels in the west of Scotland at the same latitude uh, this month, I would have uh, generated that one megawatt hour of electricity. Um, however, even though we've generated less electricity, um, still over 78% of the electricity I consumed came from my solar panels this August. And we still exported six times more electricity uh, to the grid than we imported. So it's been a profitable month still. Now the best day uh, was uh, the 16th of August. Uh, we generated 43 kilowatt hours. Um, it wasn't uh, unbroken sunshine by any stretch of the imagination, um, but it was a mixture of uh, fair weather clouds and direct sunshine. Um, the worst day was uh, the 30th of August and we only generated 11 kilowatt hours. But even on the worst day, we still generated more electricity than we brought in from the grid. And that's really useful. Um, it demonstrates the value of having a, a nice big uh, solar panel array on my rooftop. A couple of highlights for the month. I had a courtesy car at the beginning of the month. That was the Hyundai Ionic uh, plug-in hybrid car. That has 30 miles of range on battery only. Um, I did 450 miles of driving and of that driving, I only needed petrol for half of the journey, uh, for half of the uh, uh, distance. The rest of it was uh, powered from my rooftop really useful insight and um, one of the things that was uh, very very interesting was that the proportion of my electricity that was uh, uh, consumed uh, at home uh, a much higher proportion of that electricity was uh, coming from my solar panels uh, than it was from the grid that's fantastic the other thing uh, that has happened this month. I'm going to uh, go to a cut scene of myself in the study uh, to talk about right now. Ever since I got my solar panels commissioned, I've been on Octopus Energy. And on Octopus Energy, I'm paying a fixed price for my electricity that I'm consuming. And I'm getting paid a fixed price for every unit of electricity that I'm exporting to the grid. And the question I've always been asking is, can I get a better price for my electricity? At the time, there was another tariff available. It's called the Octopus Go tariff. Let's have a look at that. This tariff gives you a very cheap price 
between half past midnight and half past four each morning. Five pence per kilowatt hour. That price is designed for people to charge up their cars at a really low price. And you can also use it for running your washing machines and your dishwashers and anything else which uh, can be automatically turned on at that time of the night. However, there's one massive disadvantage with Octopus Go. You cannot get paid any price for electricity you export from your solar panels. But there is a different tariff available. Let's have a look at that. So this is the Agile tariff with Octopus Energy. This is unique. It gives you a unique price for electricity at each half hour period of each day. And that changes from day to day. You don't know about next day's electricity until later on the previous afternoon. That gives you an opportunity to take advantage in variations in price. And one of the things you can see here is that there's a big spike in price in the early evening, between four and seven o'clock in the evening. And likewise, in the nighttime, in the small hours, you get a cheaper price of electricity. Now the green line is the price of electricity I'm paying already. And when you think to yourself that you're using most of your electricity in the daytime, it doesn't look like such a good deal at first glance. But there's two things to be mindful of. Uh, number one, I've got solar panels. And number two, we can get a different price between summer and winter. And we'll have a look in that. So what you can see here is the price between April and August in yellow. And you can see the price for January and February in red. And the summertime prices is much higher. But the thing about solar panels is that you're not using that electricity, so you're not paying for it. But in the winter time, the price is cheaper during the daytime and it's much cheaper at nighttime. You still pay a heavy price in the early evening for your cooking, um, but that price drops off quite rapidly after eight o'clock. So the reason for the difference in price is down to wind power. Um, there's a lot more wind in general uh, in the autumn and winter time and also early spring. In the summertime, uh, the winds are a lot more slack and there, ha there still isn't enough solar power in our uh, system to make up that slack. So we have to use gas power. Uh, we're relying on that a lot more in the summertime. But let's have a look at this uh, wintertime uh, price in a more detail. So you can see there's quite a wide variation in your wintertime prices. The price can be very cheap and likewise the price can also be very expensive. There's two things to note. Um, the price is capped at 35 pence per kilowatt hour. Um, that's a safety net. Um, if you looked at tes Texas uh, earlier on this year, they had a really cold snap and they had uh, large scale blackouts, rolling blackouts, and the price of electricity in that state uh, became astronomical and some residential consumers did not have capped prices and they ended up paying well over $10,000 in some instances for their electricity for such a short period of time. So we've got that safety net, um, but we've also got really cheap prices at times. And if you've got an, a long range electric car, you don't need to get it charged up every single night. So if you know there's a storm coming uh, or you've got uh, a lot of fresh wind throughout the whole country, that means a lot of wind power has been generated and that keeps your prices down. And you can take advantage of these cheap prices. In the summertime, the price doesn't matter. And we'll look at the export side of things now because that's very interesting. So on this graph, you can see we've got a green line and this is the flat rate of electricity that we're getting paid at the moment. 
And one of the things you can see is that on average for the whole year, we will get paid more for ele exporting our electricity, quite substantially more at, at times. Uh, let's look at this in a bit more detail. So during the daytime, the thing to note is that we're getting paid even more money between April and August than we are in the winter time. Now the winter time doesn't really matter. If you're charging up an electric car, you won't have any spare electricity left over for export. So we'll look at the summertime electricity price in more detail. The, the hours between eight o'clock and 4.30, five o'clock, those are the most important hours for export um, for solar panels. You're not gonna be exporting anything at nighttime. You can see that even in the worst case, um, the price isn't going to be that much worse in most instances. And if it is that much worse, then that's an opportunity to charge up other things like your car uh, during those periods of time. But we can also get much better prices than the mean. Um, you can see sometimes we can get paid 17 pence per kilowatt hour uh, around eight o'clock in the morning. And that's very, very good. And also at seven, uh, five o'clock in the evening, we can get paid over 20 pence per kilowatt hour um, and I'm still generating maybe three to four kilowatts at that time of the evening. So that's, uh, that's a useful um, uh, price to get. If you pay a fixed price, you're just getting an average price. And there isn't any opportunity to improve your returns with average prices all that much. But if you take a variable price, as I've just illustrated, you can take those averages and you can divide them up. And successful people know how to divide and conquer. And this is a very good way of doing things. There's some major advantages with an agile price. Um, it encourages you to take advantage of abundant energy. And what that means is that during times of uh, shortage, um, you're not adding your own load onto that acute period of shortage. And that helps balance the grid, which is good for everybody else, but it's especially good for you because you can make extra money from it. With these higher prices for export, I reckon the return on my investment will be reduced even further by a substantial amount. Previously, I calculated my returns would be about 11 years. Uh, an electric car will probably reduce it to nine years. And I think this extra export price will reduce my return on investment even further than that. I could be looking at seven or eight years return on investment. That's something I'm very happy about. And it's and it illustrates the value in it of investing in solar panels right now. At the moment, we've got lots of wind power, but we don't have our counterpart in quite the same quantity for the summertime. And prices, are going up quite a lot. Wholesale price of gas has more than doubled since the beginning of last year. And with the dependency that we have on gas, especially during the summertime, uh, that's gonna make solar panel investments even more attractive uh, in the coming years. So that scene of me in my study, uh, that was filmed right at the beginning of the month. And since then, uh, the thing to note has been that the wholesale price of electricity has just remained stubbornly high all the way through August. Um, on average, uh, the tariff on the Octopus Agile uh, uh, system has been about 27 pence per kilowatt hour uh, daily. And that sounds pretty bad but it's even better when it comes to uh, import. I am typically, uh, I mean, right now, I'm getting paid 15 pence per kilowatt hour for the electricity I'm generating as I film this. That's pretty good. The scary thing is, is the fact that uh, it's high gas prices which are driving these um, electricity prices high, uh, sky high. Um, I'm really hoping that as we go into autumn and the days start, and the nights start to draw in, uh, that the wind power will increase. And hopefully uh, these 
uh, really high electricity prices will come back down again. That's the gamble. Um, so it's only really for, for brave people, the Octopus Agile Tariff. Um, I think it's uh, I think it's definitely worth a punt during the summertime, uh, but uh, during the autumn and winter times, uh, we shall see. Um, my electric car is due for arrival on the 13th of September, and my electric car charger still isn't installed yet due to a lack of spare parts. But they've now got the spare parts, and though that is due to be installed on the 14th of September. So I'm hoping my next video will be uh, quite a bit sooner uh, than it would regularly. I want to talk all about electric cars at that point and maybe even uh, do a little bit of a, a, a vlogging session uh, picking up my car. All will be revealed very soon. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I thank you for watching and uh, I hope to do a couple of uh, videos on hill walking in the meantime, uh, but uh, I will talk to you later.